talent that you would have to develop in, yeah. as a team if you were if you had developed a, a closeness like almost a family kind of a thing where where ESP bridges were already happening you know oh so and so is about to call you know and there they are mm -hmm. you know and so you're wired in already that would have the best possibility of of witnessing the same kind yeah, of thing i agree with that are you familiar with the work of crowley at all Alice, alistair crowley a bit crowley? Mm -hmm. you know me and blue are actually reading a crowley book right now and this was one of their main things was to try to reproduce group um invoke some kind of spirit i forget the name they call that lamb or something like this Mm -hmm. But Crowley, these guys, you know, in their little secret society that they had going on, were taking peyote and right. all having shared visions of contacting these, you know, interdimensional beings. And, you know, they're doing exactly what you said. They were going through different initiations and different practices so that they were all sort of on the same level mentally before, you know, invoking the spirit. But it's interesting. And it's me and Blue are just now sort of uh, getting into the sort of... Um, you know, maybe English mysticism or Crowley's really interesting. You know, people, I feel like um, misrepresent him and maybe intentionally he wanted that, but he was one of the first people to really, you know, blend these worlds of yoga and, um, you know, like maybe some of the pagan traditions that were found in Europe and shamanism from Mexico. And he was, he was a really um, important figure. I feel like really, he doesn't really get credit for it. Are you familiar with his work at all? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, of course. And, and uh, the, you know, I feel like, uh, well, when we were over in the, uh, the Temple of Music, you know, I had a oh, feeling the Temple that of music, yeah. Yeah, there, are, there are various places, you know, where there were theosophical churches and things, you know, where rituals probably did occur. You know, and, and rituals still occur, and, and they occurred when we were in them. <laughs> so we, we continue to we continue the traditions of occurring. We actually continue the d traditions of occurring in Egypt in the in the king's chamber at the mm. top of the Great Pyramid. Yeah. You know, you can actually go there and groups yeah. activate together. So you know, it's it was it's extraordinary, and uh, and we've done it a few times. He blazed groups. some trails, I'd say, for sure, and he left, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he stayed uh, on an island not far from here in the Hudson Valley. He had some time here, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, there's history uh, that he's, I think, illuminated, and those that do any investigating and, and see who was it that was doing masculine, you know, mm -hmm. you know because it was a, a rare group of artists and occultists and really fascinating people that were probably putting together the kind of spirituality that we see in that is normal Absolutely. for people today. But there's been some very loosely uh, sort of um, anecdotal uh, experiments with, with group consciousness that have happened. You know, we remember the astral... Uh, party that somebody you know everybody had to go somewhere one day at a certain time it was an astral party on the North Pole and people wrote in about like what happened at the party and without having any interactivity because it was all in mail it was back in the day um, you know uh, actual you know physical mail uh, people had seen the same thing. So mm -hmm. I think that what what really has to happen is more experimentation along the lines of anecdotal evidence, you know, uh, uh, of the potential for the psychedelics because because it's been so prohibited and so you know reviled and and, and, and taboo until recently, uh, and now I think we have an incredible opportunity to try some of these anecdotal amazing uh, possibilities of people actually being able to be. See, this is, I think that other countries, I don't want to denigrate U.S., but, you know, other countries have already been interested in this and see the potential for psychic, developing psychic ability. This is, you know, that is the next step for yeah. our, con for, for our planet. We've got all the technology and we're going to keep having that, but still the, the, the mental ability to, to move things and think the same things and send messages through the mind. I mean, 
it's an incredible potential. Well, I we'll... actually find um, Alistair Crowley, because essentially there's been a preconceived notion around Alistair Crowley and a lot of fear programming also specifically when his name is mentioned. Um, and Dakota introduced me to um, his book, which I just started diving into yesterday. And what I find to be fascinating is that ultimately the foundation is actually very simple and it can get very complex and interdimensional and, and telepathic and whatnot. And simultaneously, what he's actually inviting people into is just quietening their mind and meditation and yoga. And so it, when I asked you both, you know, the question of what do you do to prepare your physical vessel to allow yourself to be in co-creation with a creativity that flows through you which is ultimately a conversation with god what he's also inviting into the first couple of chapters is just sit in meditation for at least two hours a day and be in devotion to that and face off with the discomfort of the body which is keeping us in the physical body which is actually stopping and and, and creating a disconnect with something greater and then from that place this is when telepathy comes in and from that place this is when astral projection comes in and a co-creation with um with something bigger but I think that also it's so easy to overcomplicate and create so much fear around what is being created. But simultaneously, the invitation is that actually, and Sadhguru says this, that um, he's not teaching people uh, to be superhuman. He's teaching people that being human is super and that it's actually just found in the stillness of meeting ourselves and then being able to realize that we are no different than the flower or the fruit or um, the very thing that created our physical bodies in the first place. Yeah, that's beautiful. Something that I think yeah. McKenna was really ahead of his time was in Leary and a lot of these guys was um, the technology being a sort of um, like a material, um, I don't know, maybe a, a physical way to come in contact with these things, telepathy. Like I feel like social media and all of the, and the whole internet is actually the egg of telepathy and the egg of sort of coming back to our natural state of oneness because we're kind of a material culture and not really a spiritual culture, we're taking the long way of having to bring it out of the, you know, the dense world of, you know, of thought and build it here. But it seems like we are all unconsciously just doing technology. I think it was Alan Watts that used to say, like in the way an apple tree apples, humans, apple technology, like our fruit is, we drop technology as our fruit. And it seems like ever since the wheel, we've been sort of rolling this, you know, into computers and, you know, it turned into the car, computers, into everything we see. But it feels like in a way, this is um, a, a reconnection to a, to a lost consumeristic species. The way that we have to have this realization is going to be through a material object, obviously. So I think technology reflects this. And I think telepathy and all these things, like, like with Elon Musk talking about putting the thing in our head, you know, who knows, who knows in a hundred years, what sort of worlds we will be experiencing, you know, we'll be able to shift through dimensions or virtual realities, anything we want will be available to us in a sort of God-like state of consciousness. We'll just log on to the neuro net. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, maybe, maybe that's what the mushroom is. You eat the mushroom and it's like plugging into the, the network of the guy in mind. It seems Actually, like it. Hey guys, thanks for listening to A Place for Humans podcast. Again, this is Dakota Wint. And please make sure to go over to Apple Podcasts, leave a positive review. Make sure to subscribe over on YouTube, Dakota of Earth. And make sure to also follow us on Spotify. See you next episode. A Place for Humans. for humans.